Hey there, Steve here, back for another episode of That Geek Guy. Today, we're going to be building a solid gaming machine that won't break the bank. But before we begin, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified each time I release a new video. Stick around, you won't want to miss this. Like you, I'm on a limited budget and I can't afford the latest and fastest GPU or CPU because as we all know, prices will drop as newer and faster products come out. The same goes for games. For those who know me, I'm a big Fallout fan and I've been playing it on my Mac with Boot Camp and Windows 10. But that limited my hard drive space, so I decided I needed a dedicated PC. So, the goal for today's build is to create a system that will play Fallout 4 at the highest possible settings at 1080p, as well as today's more demanding games at a decent frame rate. I already had a cool case, the Cool Master Elite 120 with an Antec 450 watt power supply, although I'd recommend getting a similar model at 500 watts. But this isn't mini ITX, so for this build, we're going to be using the MSI B450i Gaming Plus Mini ITX motherboard with the tried and true AMD Ryzen 5 2600X model CPU. Now I went for that for two reasons. Uh, number one, because I was impatient and the regular 2600 one wasn't in stock and the X was. But, you know, I'm not really much of an overclocker, so for this build, the 2600X is going to be just right because it's already going to be factory clocked. Next up, we're going to have the XFX Radeon RX 580 GPU. For memory, we're going to be using the XPG 3000 MHz 16 gig DDR4 memory. And for storage, we're going to be using another XPG product, in this case, the XPG SX8200 Pro M2 512 gig SSD. All of these products are available on Amazon, and I'll list the prices and links in the description below. Okay, so we're going to do a quick unboxing of the motherboard, and then we're going to begin putting our machine together. We open up the case, we've got the motherboard, we'll set that aside. A couple things I want to point out here. We've got our accessory shield. Driver disc. Don't use that. You get it off the internet. We have built-in Wi-Fi, so we have a couple of antennas. Got some SATA cards, or cables. Instruction book, which is going to be very useful if we're going to overclock. All the extra junk. Really cool badge and a spare screw for our SSD card. That's gonna come in handy because the one we bought didn't come with it. And then we have some special instructions about how to apply the heat sink and so forth. Okay. So, I'm gonna put most of these back. And one thing I like to do when I do my builds is you can use the box for an assembly station so you don't break the pins on the back of it, or damage your surface. One way to do this safely is you can take the static electricity bag out, or the anti-static bag, fold it over, and you can use it as, as a surface for your motherboard. Okay, so this is where we're gonna work. Now, what I wanted to point out to you is, since we're using uh, one of the M.2 uh, SSD cards, in order to save space on the motherboard, the manufacturer went ahead and put the connection here on the back. So this particular card did not come with the spare screw, which is why we're gonna use the one that we had today. <laughs> there it is. All right, so in order to install these, you'll notice that there's a little notch here. And on our card, we have a little notch right there. You can see that, which fits in right here. You just plug it in there, and then we're going to seat that screw down. It takes a very nimble hand to get the screw started, but once you get it in there, it just screws right in, so it's not a, not a problem. And don't over-tighten it. You don't want to crack your card or anything. All right, so flip our board over, and the next step is we're going to go ahead and install the processor. 
Okay, what's important to note is when installing your processor, there's a little gold triangle on one of the corners. Now, it's hard to see on this particular board, but there is one in the bottom of the corner here. Let's see, right there where my thumb is. And that's how you're gonna line up your CPU. Another way to look at it is when you're reading the words, it says socket seven. You can read it legibly from one direction only. So when you're looking at that direction, that's the same direction that your chip is gonna go in. So if in doubt, just make sure that it actually drops into the holes when you do it. Because if you try it any other direction, it just won't settle in. And it'll just naturally drop. See that? It'll just naturally drop in. So then to secure it, you just drop your pin down here, or your arm down here, and it tucks up under there. All right, and that's it. So the next step, though, is going to be this cooling fan. All right, so this one come with pre-attached lockdown brackets here and the little hook will clip onto here when you lock it down but for this particular fan it's got the uh, the screw types here so we're going to have to remove these first before we can install this heat sink important to note is once you remove these brackets this plate right here is probably gonna fall off the bottom. So you wanna make sure that you keep that in place so that they stick up through your board. Because of the particular memory that I purchased, they've got this larger heat sink. We're gonna install these first so we have enough clearance to install the cooler. So looking at our board here, you'll notice that with all memory, they're notched. And so you wanna line that up with the notch on the board as well. Make sure you pull down these tabs and slide the, sim in, or the dim in like this until it locks. Again, make sure you line up the notch. Push it down until it locks. Since I stuck my fat thumb into the thermal paste on the cooler, we're gonna go ahead and apply a new dab. Now there's lots of ways that you can apply this. You can do a crisscross, a plus, a zigzag, but the best way to apply it in general is to use a pea-sized dollop like this. Okay. Next, take your cooler. Just like the CPU, we're gonna make sure that we have it with the, uh, with the label up. We've got our pea-sized dollop of thermal paste on here. Need to make sure that our screws align <clears throat> with the fittings like this. As you can see, we have the clearance now with our memory. So we grab our screwdriver and I usually start with one corner and then I'll go to an alternate one just to make sure that it uh, doesn't bend or flex too much here. Now, you're gonna have to give it kind of a push here to get started. And then I'll go for the other side so that the weight is evenly distributed on there. I don't want to pull or bend the board too much. Done. 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 Okay. Now we can plug in our CPU fan on the board here, and it's notched, so it'll only fit in one way. Done. And now we can take the wire and tuck it away just like that. There you go. <clears throat> now we've got our PCI slot here so that we can install our video card, which will be next. And that's basically it for putting the board together. Okay, next we're gonna install our motherboard into our case. But before we can do that, we need to install the back plate onto the case. Very simple. Make sure it's aligned right side up. The case like that. Bring it over to your case and just press it in like so. Now you can take your motherboard, <clears throat> slide it in like this, line it up, and you're going to have these mounting holes right here, here, there, and there. In fact, one thing that I would recommend for this particular one right here, put the screw in there first. Grab your screwdriver so that it's not going to push it back out. That way when you line this in, you're not going to have a hard time trying to get the screw to 
fit into the slot like it should. There we go. Very easy. This case has connectors for both AC97 and HD audio. Take the HD audio connector and plug it in right here. It's pinned out so it'll only fit in one direction. Once you have that in, then that'll free up the slot so you can go ahead and put your video card. Before we install the power supply, we're going to need to install the video card. One thing I like about this XFX graphics card is this metal backplate, which helps with heat dissipation. Another thing I like about new toys is being able to peel off the plastic. So to install the video card, we're going to need to remove these back plates first. For this model, they have a protective plastic cover right here. Make sure you remove that. And then this is notched right here, so we can fit into our uh, PCI slot here. The thing I like about this case is that we can use full-size video cards. Little tip, to fit this through the PCI uh, back place, you're gonna need to remove this little cap off of the DVI connector here. Then it should just slide right in. Grab your mounting screws. Okay, there we go. For me, I'm gonna be using HDMI. I'm gonna pull that plug out right there. These are your digital video connectors, which are great for 4K. Now that the video card is mounted, we can install the power supply. Start by feeding the wires through the slot. Once you've fed the wires through the back, make sure to keep the power supply out to make it easier to install all the connections. This board comes with a 20 pin plus four pin adapter to fit into our 24 pin motherboard, like so. Because I'm using an older power supply with just a six pin PCI, I need to use the included adapter cable so that I can plug it in properly. Next, we'll plug the six pin PCIe power supply into the adapter, like so. front panel connector it goes in like here next plug in your USB connection this is slotted so it'll only fit in one direction then you can plug in your USB 3 front panel connections and then finally you can install your power supply by sliding it in the back like so and there you have it I'm happy to report this system not only plays Fallout 4 at Ultimate with max settings, it also handles many current games set from mid to high at 1080 resolution with respectable frame rates averaging around 59 to 60 frames per second. What impressed me most was the boot speed. Thanks to the SSD, this machine boots in a fraction of a time than most standard systems of today. We're talking mere seconds compared to minutes. When I bought my iMac years ago, I was impressed by the boot times of the hybrid Fusion Drive installed in it. I wanted to do a series of benchmarks and comparisons, but this video was already running a bit long. So instead, I'll leave you with a quick comparison of boot times between the iMac with the Fusion Drive and our new system with SSD. So what do you think? Are there any comparisons or benchmarks that you'd like to see? Leave a remark in the comment section down below and let me know what else you'd like to see. Hey there, thanks for watching That Geek Guy. If you like what you just saw, give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Just click on the geek image in the circle. When you're done, check out more helpful videos like this one to the left. Catch you later.